Today we are working the new headway pre-intermediate book. Page 10. So, how many different ways can people communicate? Mr. Paul, what do you think? Uh, we can communicate by voice, uh, by hands, like um, deaf people communicate with their hands, don't they? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gestures. How about by writing emails? Writing emails, yes, letters. Text messages. Yeah. Telegrams. Telegrams, are, are they still being used? Probably. Well, I suppose in poorer parts of the world, yeah. Yeah. Maybe postcards? Oh yeah, people go on holiday, postcards, yeah. Um, writing books, writing academic articles. Uh-huh. Newspaper and magazine articles. Okay. Hmm. Here we have an interesting form of communication. It is a message in a bottle. And here, we have a man who reminds me of William Shakespeare. He is writing with a feather pen. And here we have something that is stereotypically Native American with a person making smoke signals, right? Okay. Very interesting. So, we have. Some ideas for communication wherein you cannot use words. Mime to the class and the class will have to guess what you're doing. So, Mr. Paul. Yeah? Why don't you mind that someone has turned you into a monkey? Okay, I can do that. I mustn't speak, must I? Mind me. Okay, sorry. I'll do it again. Okay. Very good. That was very much like a monkey. Now, as you can see, there's a picture of a beautiful monkey right here. That's where I got that idea. Now, we have read the text quickly and match the headings to the paragraphs. So, we have a history of communication, how we communicate, communication today, and differences between people and animals. Interesting. Let's think about those headings as we read. We have people, the Greek communicators. Mr. Paul, can you please read our first paragraph for us? Yeah. We can communicate with other people in many different ways. We can talk and write, and we can send messages with our hands and faces. There is also the phone, including the mobile for chatting and text messaging, the fax and email, television, film, painting, and photography can also communicate ideas. Animals have ways of exchanging information too. Bees dance and tell other bees where to find food. Elephants make sounds that humans can't hear. Whales communicate by song. Monkeys use their faces to show anger and love. But this is nothing compared to what people can do. We have language. About 6,000 languages in fact. We can write poetry, tell jokes, make promises, explain, persuade, tell the truth or tell lies, and we have a sense of past and future, not just present. Dance, uh, oh, where are we? Here? Yeah? Okay, sorry. Communication technologies were very important in the development of all the great ancient societies. Around 2900 BC, paper and hieroglyphics 
transformed Egyptian life. The ancient Greeks loved the spoken word. They were very good at public speaking, drama and philosophy. The Romans developed a unique system of government that depended on the Roman alphabet. In the 14th century, the printing press helped develop new ways of thinking across Europe. And our final paragraph, please. Radio and television have had a, a huge influence on society in the last hundred years. And now we have the internet, which is infinite. But what is this doing to us? We can give and get a lot of information very quickly, but there is so much information that it is difficult to know what is important and what isn't. Modern media is changing our world every minute of every day. Okay. Can we look at this uh, new vocabulary? Mobile, uh, to move from one place to another. Um, I think in this context it's talking about mobile phone, right? Your phone for talking to people? Okay. How about poetry? What's poetry? Okay, can you move up? Move, scroll up a bit. I can't see it. So, poetry. Um, these are. This is a, a form of writing which often rhymes from one line to the next, and you could have a, a certain kind of code with your poetry. So the first two lines you could say are A and A, and they would both rhyme. And the second two lines you could say were well, B and B. So you could have another two lines which rhyme, but they don't rhyme the same as the first two lines in A, if you see what I mean. Oh. And, and you could develop this all the way through. And what's a hieroglyphic? This is a, the Egyptian way of writing, uh, often found in the pyramids. And uh, it was just a, a way of communication. And they, a lot of it was to do with uh, codes and pictures and drawings which mapped out uh, a communicative way of language uh, speaking or communicating, I don't know, something like that. What's an alphabet? Uh, the alphabet is the, the list of uh, letters which one would use to communicate with. Uh -huh. Media. A media, that's the press, the papers, newspapers, uh, communication like uh, Fox News, certain CNN TV program, uh, to do with the news, isn't it, by the, the multinational corporations like Sky News, which is owned, I think, by Rupert Murdoch. A history of communication, where would we put that? Good subtitle for where? That one there. Here. Yeah. We're talking about Egypt, the Greeks, the Romans, the 14th century. This is giving you the history okay. of communication. Now, how we communicate, where would that go? I think this, no, not that one, but the one underneath. You scroll it up a bit. How we communicate. Well, that does say we can, <laughs> I'm not sure actually, because here it's, it says a way of communicating. I would That's say... Historical. Probably this one. Okay. Right? Communicate with people in different ways. We can talk, write, send messages with hands and faces. Yes. I yes. think that's how we communicate. Yes. Communication today. <clears throat> I think we're going here. Can you move it up a touch? I can't see it. Talking about radio, television, the internet. I think this is about communication today. Okay, yeah. And then differences between people. Can you scroll up? We can't see it. Differences between people and animals. I think this one, right? Can you scroll up a touch? I think this one, our second paragraph. Uh huh. Begins with animals. Yeah. Communication there.
Now we have match the pictures on page 11 to each of the four ancient societies in paragraph 3. Let's remind ourselves about paragraph 3. We have Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. Let's take a look. Oh, the printing press in Europe. Okay. So, what do you think here? What society would this picture Greek? Be? Could be. How about this? Oh, no, that's Greek, isn't it? That one. Maybe the. Oh, that's Roman, isn't it? First one, that's the Romans. Romans. I can think of reasons to argue this would be Greek and this would be Roman, or this would be Roman and this would be Greek. I think the top one's Romans. You think so? I, I think A is Romans, I think B is Greek. Okay. How about C? Well, this is the printing press. Printing press in Europe? Yeah, that, who was that? William Caxton. He had the first Indeed. printing press. And this is the hieroglyphics. So this is Egypt. Yeah. The Sounds Egyptians. Good. Read the text again and answer the question. We have which animals are mentioned? What can they do? What do you think? Uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I th thought I did a pretty good impression of an animal, so yeah, perhaps... Yeah, monkey, right? Let's see. Um, we have bees, dance, oh, yes. elephants make sounds, mm -hmm. whales communicate, monkeys use their faces, yeah. Then we have information on humans. So, several so animals. What is special about human communication? Well, we have an alphabet. Right. We can, can read, we can write. What else can we do? We can mine. Yeah. We can write poetry. We can tell jokes. We can. We can make promises, explain, persuade, tell the truth, or tell lies. We have a sense of past and future, not just present. So can I tell you a joke? Maybe later. But these are things that are unique to us, right? Okay. We have elephants, bees, whales, monkeys. They obviously don't tell jokes. Humans do. So, we are unique. Which four forms of media are mentioned in the last paragraph? Uh, television. Television was there. I think radio and internet. What yeah. else? Mobile. Uh, modern media. I don't know. Printing press. Maybe modern media is the fourth one. Radio, television, internet. Then maybe more broadly talking about modern media? Yeah. Okay. So Mel, what do you think? What can animals do that people can't? Well, they can walk on four legs. Yeah. Okay. Maybe in terms of communication. Uh, Are there elephants can that? make sounds that humans can't hear. Yeah. Monkeys use their face to show anger, love, but I think people do that as well, don't they? People can. Yeah. Whales, it says, can communicate with songs. Humans can't communicate underwater very effectively with their spoken language. Um, what else? What can animals do for communication to people? Can't well, yeah, I saw this program. Okay. I saw this program about... Uh, these monkeys in uh, New Zealand, okay. and they had developed their own form of communication. So they had developed their own sounds uh -huh. to warn the other monkeys of danger. Uh -huh. And what they did was, as an experiment, they took some of these monkeys from New Zealand and they took them to another part of the world uh -huh. um, in the tropics somewhere. I can't remember where it was, but it was where they have a lot of snakes. Uh -huh. And. Guatemala, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, 
the, the native monkeys would make certain sounds to warn of danger, but the other monkeys that had come from New Zealand didn't recognize those sounds. So what it showed was that in different parts of the world, monkeys developed different languages, different sounds to warn of danger. So when a snake was approaching them, the local monkeys all ran, because they had already communicated the danger through their own uh, system of language, and the new monkeys from New Zealand didn't, didn't run. They didn't know that there was a snake. Okay. Because their idea of danger was a different kind of sound. Oh. Yeah. So humans have different languages, so monkeys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. We have how do you like to communicate? Do you prefer to talk on the phone or write emails or what do you like best? Oh, well, um, I don't really like using the phone to be honest. I'm not a phone person. Um, email, yeah. I like using email as a form of communication. Okay. But in the classroom when I'm teaching, I enjoy that. Sure. Because I, I've kind of developed my own style. And yeah. I, before, I mean, 20 years ago, if someone said to me, go and stand in front of all these students, I wouldn't have a clue what to do. But now, it's totally different. It's t totally the opposite way. I've developed my own style. Uh, I can teach at any level now. I'm quite happy with that. So that is also another form of communication in front of people. But on the phone, I don't really care to use the phone too much. I see the phone as a constant uh, interruption. I'll be doing something, the phone goes. So, um, yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not really a fan of the telephone at all. Okay. We have what is happening in information technology today. Well, in Saudi Arabia, they've got a robot. And it's quite intelligent. And it's so intelligent, in fact, that they've actually given it Saudi citizenship. Oh. A robot. Interesting. And people that have been living here for years and years and years, they don't give them citizenship. That's, to me, that's quite remarkable. And the reason I point this out is that robots now, they seem to be becoming more and more advanced. I mean, 30 years ago, robots were building cars. But now, robots are talking to people, carrying out tasks, moving around on their own. We now have um, a vehicle or vehicles at Heathrow Airport which will pick up the passengers. There's no driver. The whole thing is done by robots. And it can recognize other vehicles coming along so it can stop. Okay. So you, when you're getting, going to get on the, the plane, you come out of the terminal, you get on the bus, and you look around and think, well, where's the driver? Oh no, it's a robot. The robot's driving the bus. Wow, technology is advancing so, so much. Yeah. In terms of information technology and communication, off the top of my head, I was thinking of like Snapchat, Instagram, you know, these new ways of getting pictures out that people can see and getting messages across. Twitter's been around for a while, so it's mostly it's on Facebook. But for communication, I was thinking about those. So why don't we try to cover one more page in this section? We have discussed the questions in here. Let's see here. Can you move it just to the right, just a touch? That's it. That's all. How many good friends do you have? Two. Okay. Do you have a best friend? Not really. Why? Okay. So why is here your best friend would not be perfect? Okay. We have a look at the photos. You're going to hear Michael, Dominic, Walid, and Shona talk about their best friends. Could we open the script, please, teacher? Sure. And could you move the uh, move it upwards? Yeah. If you could scroll it upwards Actually, so that I can see that. Okay. Tape script 1.4. Best friends. Shona. I have three or four good friends, but I think my best friend is Kirsty. We first met when we were 12. She started at my school 
and the teacher asked me to look after her. We soon became friends. We looked quite funny together. She's very tall and I'm quite small. Because we grew up together, we know everything about each other. So Kirsty knows me better than anyone else. I can always talk to her about my problems. She always listens and then gives me good advice. I hope I do the same for her. We are both married now and we live quite near each other, but in different towns. We talk on the phone all the time, especially now, because we are both having a baby this summer. Dominic. My best friend is called Sammy. Uh, and he often comes to play at my house after school. A long time ago, uh, when I was four, uh, we went to Busy Bee Nursery School together. Me and Sammy are both six now. I like him because he's funny and he plays football. I like going to play at his house too. He's got a big garden. Michael, I have two good friends from university called Dave and Azam. We stayed in the same house near the university. I don't know why we became friends. We were all very different. Dave was quiet and always worked hard, and Azam was a real character. He never remembered his house keys. He climbed in through the window at least once a week. He loved cooking Indian food and having people for dinner. Our house was always full of visitors. Now, of course, life is very different. Dave is a writer and lives in France. He sends me long, funny emails every month. Azam is an international lawyer. He's working in Hong Kong at the moment. But we still meet once a year with our families. We usually meet at Dave's house in France and have a holiday together. Walid. My best friend is my neighbor, Talal. He's 16. Our fathers are good friends, and I call Talal's dad, Uncle Ahmed. We grew up together. When we were kids, we always liked the same games. We still play football together, and we both support the same football team, Al Mabala. We go to watch them whenever they play at home, and we often go shopping together because we like the same kind of clothes. Talal's great. He's like a brother to me. Let's then complete the chart. So we have Christy, Sammy, David Azand, and Talal. Who are their friends? Why don't we look again at these one by one? Tape script 1.4. Best friends. Show them. I have three or four good friends, but I think my best friend is Kirsty. Uh huh. So who's speaking right now? Is that Shona? Shona, right? So Kirsty is the best friend. The person speaking is Shona. Now we want to know when they met. We first met when we were twelve. Uh huh. She what was that? Uh, we first met when we were 12, she said. Right, they met when they were 12. And now we want to know why they're friends. She started at my school, and the teacher asked me to look after her. We soon became friends. We looked quite funny together. She's very tall, and I'm quite small. Because we grew up together, we know everything about each other. So Kirsty knows me better than anyone else. I can always talk to her about my problems. She always listens and then gives me good advice. I hope I do the same for her. We are both married now and we live quite... Okay, so for why are they friends? We have a few reasons. What do we have? She can always talk to her about her problems. Yeah. And she always listens and then gives her good advice. Sure. I mean, that's free therapy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And okay. she, she hopes that she can do the same for her, whether or not she can, doesn't really, does, no, does it? Yeah. Sounds good. Now we have our friend Dominic here. The best friend is... Sammy. 
We have that here. Our speaker here is... Dominic. Who? I think it's Dominic. Yes, it is. Okay. The best friend is Dominic. We want to know when they met. My best friend is called Sammy. Uh, and he often comes to play at my house after school. A long time ago, uh, when I was four, uh, we went to Busy Bee Nursery School together. What do you think on when they met? A long time ago, when he was four. Right. And he's six now, so about two years ago, right? Hmm. Yeah, that age, that's a long time. Now we want to know why they're friends. Me and Sammy are both six now. I like him because he's funny and he plays football. I like going to play at his house too. He's got a big. I believe we got it there, right? Yeah. What do you think? He likes him because he's funny and he plays football. Yeah. And he likes to going, going to play at his house because he's got a big garden. Right. Ready? Okay. Two now. Two to go. We have Dave and Azam. Michael. Uh -huh. Michael. Who's the friend? Michael. 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 Go right here. Michael, Michael. When did they meet? Let's hear it. I have two good friends from university called Dave and Azam. And we have it. What is it? When did they meet? Uh, maybe they met at university. Right. University. Why are they friends? Let's hear it. We stayed in the same house near the university. I don't know why we became friends. We were all very different. Dave was quiet and always worked hard, and Azam was a real character. He never remembered his house keys. He climbed in through the window at least once a week. He loved cooking Indian food and having people for dinner. Our house was always full of visitors. Now, of course, life is very different. Dave is a writer and lives in France. He sends me long, funny emails every month. Azam is an international lawyer. He's working in Hong Kong at the moment. But we still meet once a year with our families. We usually meet at Dave's house in France and have a holiday together. Why are they friends? Well, he doesn't really know because uh, they, they seem to be quite different. Well, you know, that's what happens in life, isn't it? If people are the same, relationships break up. Yeah. I mean, it's a bit different. If two people follow the same, or a group of people follow the same football team, you think, oh, they've got a lot in common. But in actual fact, if you put them to, in the same house to live together, and they, they're all actually the same, so they all want to be in the kitchen at the same time, they all want to watch a different TV program, so it just doesn't work. But if you have people who are different, it often works because they all follow different avenues, different paths, and it makes it interesting for the others to know what exactly they're getting up to, if you it, see what I mean. It does say we're all very different, right? One worked hard, one is a funny person, a character. One is cooking Indian food and having people over. A lot of people would always come over and now their lives are different too. So yeah, I mean, he says that they're really different, but he doesn't give a lot of information as to why he thinks they became friends, does he? Our friend, Talal. Who is speaking? Waleed. Waleed. Waleed goes here. We want to know when they met. My best friend is my neighbor, Talal. He's 16. Our fathers are good friends, and I call Talal's dad, Uncle Ahmed. We grew up together. When we were kids, we always liked the same games. We still play football together, and we both support the same... Maybe a hint there. Sorry? Maybe a hint on when they met. What when they meet? Oh, um... Yeah. Well, they grew up together. Yeah. Probably the same age, probably. Yeah, it doesn't give you the actual, you know, we met when we were four years old. Yeah. But yeah, grew up together. Okay. Now we want to know why are they friends? Let's see. In football team, Al Mabana. 
We go to watch them whenever they play at home, and we often go shopping together because we like the same kind of clothes. Talal's great. He's like a brother to me. He's like a brother to me. Okay. Why are they friends? Because Talal is like a brother to him, and they both support the same football team, Al Mabara. They grew up together. They like the same football team. Like the same clothes, go shopping together. They have things in common, right? Now we have some questions. Which friends talk to each other about their problems? Do you remember? Uh, oh yeah, I've, I've forgotten the name. The, the little boy, oh, uh, oh, I can't remember. How about Kirsty and Shona? Yeah, she gives her advice, doesn't she? Kirsty gives advice? Yes. She listens to problems? Which friends share the same hobby? What is it? Uh, I think Talal and his mates, they follow the same football team. Yeah, Talal's mates like football and they like shopping for clothes. Yeah. Um, I think Sammy and his friend Dominic, they both like football, they both like telling jokes, right? He says Dominic plays football and he's funny. Um, which friends only see each other once a year? Oh, I can't remember. I think it was Dave and Azam and their friends, right? Yeah. One's a lawyer, one's a writer, mm -hmm. and I think they have a holiday over in France once a year, right? Okay. Um, which friends go to school? Well, it's a little boy and his friend because they're only six. Sammy and Dominic at six go to school. Whose friend likes Indian cooking? Uh, Dave. Yeah, David and Sam, they have visitors over all the time. Makes Indian food, right? Yeah. Whose friend has a big garden? Can you just take it up a bit? Whose friend has a big garden? Oh, that's that little boy. His right. friend's got a big garden. Dominic has a big garden where they go play at the school. Whose friend is tall? I can't remember. I believe that was Kirsty and Shona. One is very tall, the other is quite small. Okay. And whose friend is like a brother? I think maybe Talal's friend. Yeah. Oh, yeah, what do you think? You mentioned that, yeah, like a brother to him. Okay, very good. Now we have some language work matching verbs with words or phrases. So become matches up with what? Become friends. Friends. Play matches with what? Together. And you want me to write these up. So become friends. Play together. Send matches up with what? Emails. Send emails. Give. Give advice. Advice. Talk. Talk on the phone. On the phone. Cook. Cook food. Food. Grow up. Grow up together. Um, we already did go, didn't we? Oh, sorry. Uh, play grow. together. Oh, yeah. Oh, that should be play football. Ah, okay. Play football. And then grow up together. Grow up together and go on the on internet. The internet. Okay. Very good. Once again, my name is Lou, and this is our pre-intermediate new book. See you next time.